structures that deform the Earth's surface can strongly influence depositional processes. But we can use these deposits in turn to learn about the structures. In this presentation, we're going to use strata that are deposited around active fold thrust structures, so-called growth strata. We're going to use this to look at the timing of deformation on these structures and to ask questions such as whether thrust structures form in a sequence or whether they're active together in a series. And does the sedimentation influence the structural development? And here is a, another seismic line. Let's add some interpretation and zoom in. And on this slightly pixely interpretive seismic section, we can begin to identify some stratigraphic units. We can identify low down in the section a pre-kinematic succession where the intervals between those pit seismic reflexes are more or less constant thickness across the fold structure. So they were deposited before the deformation began. We can identify over the top, running up to the seabed, a post-kinematic succession that's essentially underformed and simply drapes across the fold. And in between is a synkinematic succession that shows thickness variations that are systematic so that away from the antiform crest, the rocks become thicker, but they thin across the crest and then away again, indicating that that fold grew as the sediments were accumulating. Let's go back to the main section and we can identify the continuity of the pre-kinematic strata, the ones that were there before deformation, overlaid by a synkinematic package where the thicknesses change and then the seabed across the top. The section looks a bit strange, that's because it's got a 3 to 1 vertical exaggeration. Let's display this without vertical exaggeration so that it shows more appropriately the structures. And we can see thrust structures in there, moderately inclined, attaching from a basal purple layer, which is the, the shale that underlies the succession. Now let's look at the synchromatic strata across here, and we can see that all the folds were active more or less at the same time. So the base of the yellow package of rocks in this interpretation is deformed, and that unit forms a growth succession across the folds. So this is a simple illustration of how we can use growth strata to understand the relative timing between structures in an array of folds and thrusts. Let's go to another submarine example. This comes from offshore Borneo. Again, here's the seismic line, but let's just add the interpretation on top. Here we go. We've got a various piles of units, and let's provide a key. So what we have is the modern seabed, and the red rocks on just underneath the seabed are quaternary. They're yesterday's sediments. As we go down in the stratigraphic pile, we're going to progressively older strata, of course, with the greyed out units being early to late Miocene. So the coloured units in here are essentially late Miocene through to the present day on the seabed. Let's look a bit more carefully at this cross section and zoom in towards the right hand side. Here's a zoom in. And on this part of the profile, we can see a pre-kinematic package that includes the grey and perhaps the darker green strata which are more or less the same thickness as you go around all the fold structures there. In contrast, the lighter green and yellow units clearly show thickness variations as we move from synform to antiform across these folds. Eventually, the red rocks on top apparently seal stratigraphically the fold structures, perhaps also the orange. Let's contrast this with a more downslope part of the structure. In this stage, we can see the seabed itself is folded, as are the quaternary rocks just below the seabed. So deformation here has continued up to the present day. In contrast, the dark green and light green strata, certainly, and maybe also the yellow, don't show thickness variations across the fold thrust system. So therefore, these rocks were deposited before the fold thrusts here developed. So putting these two cross sections together, we've got clear evidence of diachroneity in the deformation. Upslope, the structures were active earlier. Downslope, they were active later, and in fact they're active today 
the seabed is deformed. So let's look at the section as a whole and try and track out the evolution of deposition and activity of deformation across the profile. So on the right, upslope, during the deposition of the dark green, it looks like the structure was active on the right. During the light green deposition, these structures were active. During the yellow, these structures. And then the orange, these structures. And finally, it looks like during the present day and in the quaternary, the more downslope structures were active. So we're able to chart the migration of deformation downslope. But in detail, some of these structures are active together. So there's an overlap in time when structures are active and when they switch off. It's interesting to speculate whether the volume of sediments being dumped across the structures on the right-hand side of this diagram, on the upslope part of the profile, maybe these are being swamped by sediment and these are killing off and preventing the fold thrust structures from amplifying any further. So the deformation migrates to a part of the structure which is seeing slightly less sedimentation. So much for an individual cross-section. Let's go back to Nigeria and look at a different fold thrust structure. Here we go. So we can recognise deformation from growth strata that show a fanning geometry with the older part of the succession more deformed, more tilted than the younger, creating this growth fan pattern. But what happens in front of the thrust structure? Let's try and cartoon up what might be going on. Here we have a thrust climbing out onto the seabed. Sedimentation is going to occur on the left-hand side where there's space, but not on top of the thrust sheet. Here the thrust then climbs up onto this little patch of sediment. The sediment is limited to the right because it pinches out against the thrust sheet. So the next batch of sediment will come in and the thrust sheet will climb up across that. And again... So the thrust also acts as an unconformity to limit the lateral extent of the sim kinematic sediments. Collectively, these make a ramp structure up which the thrust climbs. So let's put this onto a cartoon. We can see a thrust ramp here defined by this lateral pinch out of the sim kinematic strata, the strata in yellow and orange colours in here. And we can see on top of the thrust sheet a growth fan. growth fan in the sin form, a progressive unconformity which defines the thrust ramp ahead of the thrust sheet. Let's identify this on this other example from Nigeria. Add some interpretation. We can see the growth fan in the sin kinematic package on top of the thrust sheet and we can see identify the pre-kinematic strata from their constant thickness at depth. But what about ahead of this growing thrust structure? We can see that obviously the sediment ag has aggraded there, building up a thick stratigraphic pile. But if we follow these packages back towards the fold thrust system, we can see that progressively they seal these splays of thrust surface in a sequence like this. One, the oldest at the bottom, and the youngest on top. So the thrust trajectory is stepping back with time. It looks like the sedimentation is strongly controlling the trajectory taken by the thrust as it tries to break out of the forelimb of this fold. There's too much sediment perhaps and eventually the thrust is being killed off by being buried and swamped by the syn kinematic deposition. So a brief look at growth strata in fold thrust belts. We can use them to deduce the timing of deformation and in doing that we find that folds tend to be active in parallel though they may, on a large scale, form in a general sequence. We've also seen that the depositional processes can control the thrust trajectory and may even kill off thrust structures, forcing deformation to migrate to parts of a basin area where there's less sedimentation.